in and we talked about um, the big earnings reports that are, we're reacting to today, Microsoft, Apple, um, Alphabet, Starbucks, McDonald's. Yep. That's not all, anything though. Else? Anything we else? Got other yeah, yeah, fire we away. Got what do you got? to talk about, too. You so know. I know. I'm trying to remember all of the numbers that we have to talk about. Should we start with Spotify let's do here, Spot. folks? Yeah, let's do Spotify. Okay. So Spotify coming out um, with their monthly active users up $9 million last quarter, which yeah. is a little below what they had been predicting. Yeah. I mean, I think um, you know Spotify and Saz, I know you want to talk about Olivia Rodrigo's album and sort of the mm-hmm. way they call it You got me on her. This is, this is all about you. Um, but I, I think you know Spotify is such an interesting uh, – it's at such an interesting part of its evolution because it's really trying to build out that ad marketplace, especially for the podcast side of the business. And yes, when you look at the absolute growth rate for Spotify, it's not exactly what you might think for a business that is um, kind of valued the way it is. I mean, 20% growth is nice, but Sazi, to come out here and miss your estimates on where you think subscriber growth is going. And I know Spotify is trying to work towards other metrics to get investors to focus on, but this is still going to be a, how many users do you have? And when you miss the low end of your guidance on that monthly active users, they were looking for 366 to to 377, um, and you got 365. I would like you to explain this one to me, and I'll read it right off of their shareholder letter here. Monthly active performance, uh, active user performance was slower than expected due primarily, primarily to lighter user intake during the first half of the quarter. COVID-19 continued to weigh on our performance in several markets, and in some instances, we paused marketing campaigns due to the severity of the pandemic. Doesn't Spotify have a, still have a contained audience? Why aren't they clobbering their own estimates? Yeah, I mean, I think it it tells you how international the business is because the first part of the quarter in the U.S. certainly wasn't hampered by any, you know, pandemic-related concerns. India, they had issues in India. And and I think that that maybe is where you get, you know, more of that growth multiple on the business from, is that you are growing quickly in markets like India. Um, And remember, it's a Swedish, you know, it's a Sweden-based company. It's not a U.S. company, though it is listed here. And I think um, just to... Uh, again, though, very, you know, street 101, you see the stock down 7%. If you come out and you miss on a headline number like, you know, your subscriber growth, and, and they've tightened the range on their full year guidance from what they had earlier this year, still basically, you know, $405 million is what they're going to be looking for at the end of the year. So That's still, below what analysts had been Well, it was, for. it was 402 to 422 last yeah. time they put that number out. So um, overall growth a little bit slower there. One positive thing, you talked about advertising. Ad sales were did more than double for the company to about yeah. 275 million euros. I've so noticed. That, so that part, yeah. it's still relatively small, but it's, but it's working. Well, the main them. thesis and here is that it, they've really expanded a podcast. We've yes. talked right. this all about where, why are you not beating your estimates? Are these podcast, is this podcast strategy by their team, is it working like they thought it would? Well, I've uh, noticed and they've just started to roll out that, um, I forget exactly what they call the mar- the, the auto inserted ads, but I've noticed a lot more podcasts doing that and mm-hmm. having the 30 second pre-roll in there. And you know, that's just, that's a pilot program. That's something that's going to be coming up. Now, the thing that I'm waiting for Spotify and every other platform to do is, you know, they'll take, you know how you can skip 15 seconds ahead yes. in a podcast, you can just whip through and the you ad. can't do that in no, Spotify? You can. Oh. You can. I'm waiting for them to take that away. So it not allow you. Yeah. Yeah. It's always more fun when you're listening to a podcast and they read the ad because they can, whoever the host is usually puts a fun spin on it. I totally agree. But efficiency, right? Yes, most definitely. Drive synergies. Yes. Um, <laughs> let's turn to another one that was out with earnings, and that is Boeing. And it actually did report earnings, a profit for the first time in almost two years, Brian Sazi, for Boeing. I mean, beleaguered, I think, is, is still fair when we're talking about Boeing, uh, um, but, but less beleaguered than it has been, I guess. Two points. Uh, I can't say this quarter is too surprising. We've heard from the major airlines. They're back supporting Boeing. They're buying its new planes. Uh, so that has shown up in this quarter. But where uh, Boeing is getting some high marks here, it's for its free cash flow. Uh, so for in this quarter, they burned through $705 million. The street was looking for them to burn through about $2.5 billion. Uh, again, they're still burning cash, but just not as worse uh, as expected. And I think that's part of the reason why you're seeing the stock up here in the early going. And, you know, something else that um, the company mentioned, I think that really stands out here, uh, and it's maybe not a Boeing-specific story, sort of a, you know, an economic story, and Boeing, of course, as one of the more economically sensitive names, you'd, you'd, you know, expect to find this kind of stuff in there. They were planning to lay off 10,000 people, an additional 10,000 people through the end of the year, reducing their workforce from 140 to 130,000, giving you a sense of the scale there, Uh, and they're not going to do that now. So, when you cancel, you effectively rehire 10,000 people you'd put on the chopping block, which is a long 
arduous HR process. You don't just do that in a day. To then say, actually, all those things that you guys did, don't worry about that. They're going to stay with the company. I think it's a good signal for the business. Good signal for the economy. Yeah, I like it. All right, can See, we move? Well, let's positive, good things. Let's, good let's things. move to one last one that I'm watching here this morning, although it's by no means the last company that reported earnings, but Pfizer um, raising its forecast for COVID-19 vaccine sales this year, coming in, yes, and beating estimates last quarter in part because of vaccine sales. But now this year, $33.5 billion in revenue is what it's expecting. And what's interesting about this is it could be one of the best-selling medicines of all time. With what's, I mean, which makes sense. You on give the it one to everybody. Hand, yeah, we're trying to. You try to. You try right, to. when you give it to everybody, but at the same time, it is in such a compressed period of time. It's also yeah. pretty astounding. Some of the others, by the way, Humira, 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 Humira. which is um, an immunosuppressive therapy. They use it for a bunch of different things. Keytruda, which is used to fight cancer. Yeah. So, um, which are also more expensive medicines, right? Yeah. So it's interesting now that because of the sheer numbers that we're approaching that. You know, Julie, if you were a sports guy, if you were watching some of that PGA Tour guy. action on a Sunday <laughs> afternoon, that's when you're going to get Keytruda ads. All the time. Humira, <laughs> yeah. all kinds of things. <laughs> you know something else that caught my eye, you guys? Um, they're also now growing other vaccines, potential vaccines. One of them for Lyme disease. Mm -hmm. Large stage study expected to start in the second half of next year. Well, it does seem that the, you know, if you're working with BioNTech, the mRNA platform, right. I mean, as a, as a normal non-scientist, I'm like, okay, great. Well, more stuff, stuff, stuff too, stuff. right? Yeah, exactly. Flu exactly. stuff based on right, right. mRNA. So. Exactly. So that's going to be interesting to see what they come out with.